Hi, welcome to the new episode of Orthodontic Matters. Uh, last week we showed you a Panrex uh, and we proposed a question of um, what would you do with this case if you saw this patient in a hygiene exam or orthodontic consultation, um, what kind of uh, problems can you identify here and uh, what would you do or what would be your next step. So let's continue with this uh, case and just uh, let's see what uh, we can kind of figure out here. All right, so let's uh, look at these pan racks here. Okay, so here's our pan racks that we showed you last week. So at the first glance, there's a couple of things you should notice right away just by looking at these pan racks. Um, and uh, many of you might have already found this, but um, there's a couple of things here. For example, right here, if you look at the x-ray, there's a... Uh, there's a um, canine, uh, the upper left canine, that's uh, pretty severely impacted. Um, and there's also the uh, upper right canine that doesn't seem to have a very good uh, path of uh, eruption. If you look at the, um, the left canine, you know, it's almost, it's almost horizontal, very close to the, or, in, or behind the sinus, probably on the palate. Um, but it has a very poor eruption path and um, <clears throat> the more horizontal and the higher the canines are um, the harder it is to retrieve if you planning to retrieve it now this this left canine has a very poor chance of retrieval really without causing damage to the other teeth in in a great many cases and if you look at this canine that's this is a lot better it looks like it might be behind or in front of the the lateral the upper right lateral um, you probably need to take a PA or preferably a, a CAT scan, <clears throat> uh, CBCT, to uh, determine you know the exact position of this canine. But I would say uh, the upper left canine has a very poor chance of retrieval. Might be a best chance in a lot of these cases to have this extracted um, and maintain uh, the primary uh, canine space and set up the case either for. Uh, or an implant for the canine, or sometimes you can mesialize the, the premolars, but nah, that would require you know more records. I just wanted you to kind of find um, find these impacted canines and just kind of identify that you know there's not a great hope of retrieving uh, the canine on the left side. There, it's a lot better on the, on the right side, uh, but uh, so it's good if you if you cut that now. So that was the, the canine. Now a couple of things, also if you look at this case, there seems to be a lot of crowding. Like if you uh, if you look here, you know, you look at these premolars coming in the canine. If you look at the, the width of the canine, um, and then you look at the width of the premolars, and you look at the available space here. Now from Panrex, it's, it's not ideal to diagnose this from a Panrex, but you can tell that there's pretty severe crowding here. Um, and a lot of times it's coming from these posterior teeth uh, mesializing when uh, a canine is crowded out <clears throat> or there's decay, for example, a lot of times these posterior teeth it will, will mesialize and create more crowding. And if you look at, if you look on the other side, um, of course the canine is impacted here. As you can tell, um, there is a turned uh, lateral, this uh, a turned premolar, uh, the upper left four looks like it's sideways. Um, and also uh, the upper left five also is coming in a pretty, pretty poor position so there seems to be some uh, pretty poor uh, eruption pattern here too. A lot of times these posterior teeth will also mesialize if <clears throat> there is more room available for these teeth um, because of some impactions or crowded out teeth. Um, so that's really about the upper arch that I think it will be good to good to uh, bring your attention to these things um, and uh, a lot of times uh, uh, you see this on, on children these days you see a lot of these impactions and just poor eruption path um, now if you look at the lower arch um, you uh, tend to see a very similar situation you see uh, for example this canine the right canine um, it just seems to be maybe a little bit turned um, also has very uh, low room for it to come in a uh, little bit better on the left side uh, not so great but a little bit better um, 
So you're starting to see quite a bit of uh, crowding develop here on the, on, the, on the lower arch too. If you look at the space available here, and then you look at the width of the teeth that are trying to erupt here, you can tell, even though from Panorex it's not good to uh, diagnose crowding uh, from a Panorex, but you can tell that there's very low room for this permanent teeth to come in. Um, it's looking kind of similar on the left side, but it's even more on the right side. So um, these would be just uh, uh, just a couple of things that are important to catch on this case. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what are we going to do about this case? Um, well, of course, you would need to take comprehensive records and do a full workup to see what you know what we need to do here. But just as um, you know, if you have if you can do if you can do anything else. Um, a lot of times it's a good idea to uh, at least maintain the space that we have now. Um, namely, um, we just don't want these posterior, posterior teeth from drifting forward and creating more crowding, uh, which oftentimes happens. You know, these teeth will just simply um, uh, mesialize and create more crowding because there's less room for the teeth to erupt. So it would be great if we could prevent these teeth from drifting mesial mesially and creating more crowding. Now how are we going to do that? Well, uh, one of the things that we could do on the upper arch, we could do a TPA, which is a um, just an arch that uh, would hook onto the band on the upper sixes, and it would go across the palate, and it will hold back these molars so they're no longer able to mesialize. So you kind of stop them um, from mesializing and it would stop from creating more crowding on the upper arch. Um, now on the lower arch there's also an appliance that can hold back these molars uh, and it's called the low lingual arch. Um, you can have a lab make that. A lot of times we put an adjustment loop on it and come around and um, <clears throat> these will hold the molars back and it would, it would uh, hold the space um, that you have after the primary teeth fall out. If you look at, um, if a, when a patient loses a primary tooth, primary teeth, like for example, the lower E's are wider than the lower fives. So after the lower E falls out, there's more room for the uh, lower five to come in. So if, you, uh, if you're able to hold back these lower six molars with the lower lingual arch, um, and you prevent it from mesializing, um, there will be some extra space here that you can use from alleviate some crowding. Now, when you, uh, uh, when you place the lower lingual arch, you will hold back the, uh, the lower sixes, so they will not mesialize as easily or at all, but it will create more class two because you're holding the sixes back. So if you think about it this way, um, if you place a lower lingual arch, it will help your crowding, but it will make your case more class two because it's holding the, the lower sixes back. So if, you're, uh, if your case has crowding and class two, the, the crowding will be better with the lower lingual arch, but it will not help the, the class two situation. So again, uh, I just wanted to bring these things to your attention, the impacted canines, the amount of crowding, uh, both on the upper and lower arch, and then we talked about that it would be a good idea to hold these molars back either with an upper TPA and a lower or in a lower lingual arch. So um, I hopefully uh, many of you came to the same conclusion, and um, it was just kind of a good exercise to get a low idea about um, these mixed dentition cases. Um, good. If you have any questions about this case or similar cases, please don't hesitate to let us know. I uh, hope you enjoyed this exercise and uh, you, uh, you kind of came to the same conclusion as we did. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this exercise. Um, if you have any questions about this case or similar cases, don't uh, hesitate to let us know. Um, we do have our webinars on the, um, Thursday, usually the second Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. Uh, and or on Saturday at uh, 9 a.m. So if you'd like to, uh, like to enroll in those webinars, uh, just send us our, your questions. It's, the webinars have a topic usually that we post on our website, 
and um, also it's a question and answer format so if you have any questions just email it to us and we'll make sure that we cover it in one of one of those webinars uh, if you'd like to enroll uh, i'll post the link uh, below this video you can also find it on our website um, again thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the weekend <music>